Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be reading some recipes relating to vegetables and side dishes. Now this first one here is um, a recipe for a yummy garden bake. And here are the ingredients. You need one cup of chopped zucchini, one large tomato chopped, a medium onion chopped, one third of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, half a cup of Bisquick mix, one cup of milk, two eggs, half a teaspoon of salt, and one eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. Heat oven to 400 degrees. Lightly spray baking dish with cooking spray. Sprinkle zucchini, tomato, onion, and cheese in dish. In medium bowl, stir remaining ingredients until blended. Pour over vegetables and cheese. Bake uncovered for 35 minutes or until knife inserted in center comes out clean. Let cool 5 minutes. And then we have a recipe for baked beans. For the baked beans, you're going to need one pound of ground beef, one large can of pork and beans, one package of Lipton onion soup mix, half a cup of water, one tablespoon of mustard, one teaspoon of vinegar, and a half a cup of ketchup. Brown the hamburger. Mix together soup and water, and then add all other ingredients. Mix together well and add to meat. Pour into casserole dish and bake at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. And then we have fried okra, which is one of my favorites. You need one pound of okra, three tablespoons of melted fat, a quarter of a cup of flour, quarter cup of cornmeal, and one teaspoon of salt. Cut okra into thin slices. Combine the dry ingredients. Stir in cut okra. Fry floured okra in small amount of oil until crisp. Turn when browned on one side and use medium heat. It's very simple, very easy. You don't have to use melted fat. You can use any kind of oil, really. You could use, um, I use um, vegetable oil. And here we have Grandma Ella's dressing. For Grandma Ella's dressing, you're going to need two cups of self-rising cornmeal, one cup of self-rising flour, two eggs, half a stick of butter, one cup of buttermilk, one cup of water, half a cup of onion, half a cup of chopped celery, one tablespoon of sage, one teaspoon of black pepper, and five cups of chicken broth. Mix cornmeal, flour, eggs, butter, buttermilk, and water together. Bake until brown. When done, crumble, add celery, onion, sage, and pepper. Pour broth over mixture. If broth is not rich enough, add a small amount of butter. Mix well and bake at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. And then up here we have a recipe for chili beans. For the chili beans, you're going to need a pound of ground beef, one onion, half a cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of vinegar, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, a quarter of a teaspoon of Texas beet, and one can of pintos. Brown hamburger and add chopped onion. Drain excess grease. Add ketchup vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, and Texas peat to hamburger. Once mixed good, add pintos and let simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes. Here's something yummy. Garlic mashed potatoes. For the garlic mashed potatoes, you will need one pound of red to, um, potatoes, three tablespoons of butter, a quarter cup of milk, and four cloves of roasted garlic. 
bake potatoes in a 350 degree oven for about 20 to 30 minutes. Coat the garlic with olive oil, wrap in full, and stick it in the oven with the potatoes to roast at the same time. Remove potatoes and let cool. Chop cooled potatoes, adding butter and milk, and mix with an electric mixer. Add cloves of garlic, salt, and pepper to taste. You may need to heat in a saucepan until warm again. And then we have fried apples. For the fried apples, you're going to need six tart apples sliced, one teaspoon of lemon juice, a quarter cup of bacon drippings, a quarter cup of brown sugar, one eighth of a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and one dash of nutmeg. In a large skillet, melt the bacon drippings. Pour apples evenly over skillet bottom. Sprinkle lemon juice over them, then brown sugar, then salt. Cover and cook over low heat for 15 minutes until apples are tender and juicy. Sprinkle with cinnamon and nutmeg. And here's another one that's a popular dish in the South, sweet potato casserole. For the sweet potato casserole, you're going to need four cups of cooked sweet potatoes, three quarters of a cup of sugar, two eggs, one third of a cup of milk, and a quarter cup of melted butter. Beat with electric mixer until smooth, and then spoon it into a baking dish. And then we're going to have a topping. A topping that goes on top of this. For that, you're going to need two-thirds of a cup of packed brown sugar, a third of a cup of all-purpose flour, one-third of a cup of butter, and one cup of chopped pecans. Combine all the ingredients above, sprinkle it over the top of the casserole, and bake at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. And that brown sugar and butter with the pecans... It makes a wonderful topping. Up here we have chips mashed potatoes. For chips mashed potatoes, you're going to need five pounds of potatoes, one stick of butter, a quarter cup of mayonnaise, salt and pepper to taste, and milk to your texture. Peel potatoes, cube up, and cook until tender. Drain. Place cubes in large mixing bowl, add butter, mayonnaise, salt, pepper, and milk to suit your texture, and mix until smooth. In another popular dish here, we have zucchini casserole. For the zucchini casserole, we're going to need these things. A quarter cup of chopped onion, four cups of sliced peeled zucchini, one can of cream of mushroom soup, one eight ounce package of herb seasoned stuffing mix, half a cup of butter melted, one cup of sour cream, and one and a half cups of shredded cheese. Cook onion and zucchini in boiling water for five minutes or until tender and drain. In a bowl, combine soup, sour cream, and shredded cheese. In a separate bowl, Make stuffing according to the package directions and stir in butter. Spread half the stuffing over the bottom of a baking dish. Spoon on the zucchini and the soup mixture. Top with remaining stuffing. Bake at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or until bubbling. And next we have stuffed pepper cups. For stuffed pepper cups, we're going to need these things. One pound of ground chuck, one onion, one can of sliced mushrooms, that's going to be a large can, one cup of cooked rice, two cups of tomato sauce, three green peppers, and shredded cheese. Preheat oven to 325 degrees. Cut peppers into halves. Mix the first five ingredients together and stuff into peppers. Set upright in pan or baking dish. Bake for 30 to 45 minutes. 
During the last five minutes of baking, sprinkle cheese on top of peppers. Here's another popular one. It's not my favorite thing, but a lot of people love it. I'll eat it to be polite, though. It's barbecue slaw. For barbecue slaw, you need a half a cup of ketchup, half a cup of vinegar, half a cup of sugar, and one head of cabbage. Mix ingredients well. You're going to grate the cabbage. You're going to shred it and grate it. Um, bring to boil and cook for three minutes. Stirring while it boils. Place in refrigerator until completely cool before pouring mixture over chopped cabbage. So you mix the ketchup, vinegar, and sugar together and boil it. And then you cool it off and then pour it over the chopped cabbage. My mom used to shred, uh, grate it with a, like a cheese grater. Okay. Next we have pinto bean pie. I've never heard of that. Pinto bean pie. You need a half a cup of cooked pintos, one teaspoon of vanilla, a quarter cup of nuts, two eggs beaten, half a cup of coconut, one stick of margarine melted, one and a half cups of sugar, and one pie crust. This is very simple. You just mix all of the ingredients, pour it into a pie crust, and bake it 350 degrees. I have never heard of that. We should make that. I want <laughs> it sounds intriguing. <laughs> I've never heard of pinto bean pie. Let me know if you want a cooking video where we make that because that sounds interesting. Okay, next we have pasta salad. For the pasta salad, you're going to need one 16-ounce box of macaroni or pasta cooked, one cucumber, one whole jar of bacon bits, <laughs> one 24-ounce bottle of ranch dressing, two cups of sharp cheddar cheese, tomato, and onion. Combine ingredients and refrigerate. That's going to make a lot of pasta salad. We also have fried okra patties, which I've never done. For that, you're going to need one pint of cooked okra, one egg, one teaspoon of salt, four tablespoons of flour, two tablespoons of cornmeal, quarter teaspoon of black pepper, quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and four tables, tablespoons of oil. Drain cooked okra and mash. After okra is well mashed, add egg and mix well. Add salt, flour, cornmeal, pepper, and baking powder. Mix well. Drop by tablespoons into hot oil. Fry until golden brown on both sides. Hmm, that's interesting. And fried squash, which is good if it's done right. For this fried squash, you're going to need three large yellow squash, sliced, one cup of cornmeal, a half, half a cup of cooking oil, and salt to taste. Completely cover slices of squash with cornmeal. Fry in hot oil until browned on each side. Place fried slices on a paper towel to absorb the oil and salt to taste. Yeah, the paper towel is very important, otherwise they get kind of gooey. They get mushy. And then another popular one, southern dish here, hash brown casserole. We can make casseroles out of anything. It's like our talent. You need one bag of frozen hash browns, shredded, one can of cream of chicken soup, one 8-ounce carton of sour cream, one 8-ounce bag of shredded cheddar cheese, three-quarters of a stick of butter, melted, one teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of butter, uh, pepper. Thaw potatoes in a colander under hot water. Mix all other ingredients together. Add potatoes and continue to mix until well coated. Bake at 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. And then squash casserole. For squash casserole, you need two cups of cooked squash, one can of cream of chicken soup, one eight ounce carton of sour cream, 
one package of stuffing mix crumbs with herbs, and half a stick of margarine. Mix squash, cream of chicken soup, sour cream, and stuffing together. Melt butter on bottom of dish. Pour mixture into dish. Bake at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. And up here we have chips, plenty of baked beans. For this recipe you need two 15 ounce cans of pork and beans, one medium onion, one medium green pepper, a quarter cup of molasses, half a cup of brown sugar, and one pound of bacon. Preheat oven to 350 degrees. Put pork and beans in a large mixing bowl. Slice up onion and green pepper to whatever size you want and add molasses and brown sugar. Mix well. Put mixture in a large casserole dish, arranging onions and green peppers just right. Arrange bacon on top. Bake at 350 degrees for one hour. And we have candy carrots. I like candied sweet potatoes. The recipe is very similar. You need one can of baby carrots, a tablespoon of butter, and two tablespoons of brown sugar. Open carrots and pour a quarter cup of juice into container and save for later. Drain rest of carrot juice. In a frying pan, combine butter, brown sugar, and carrot juice. Bring to bowl and let simmer for about a minute. Add carrots and let simmer in sauce till fully coated and tender. And we also have stuffed baked potatoes. For the stuffed baked potatoes, you will need four medium-sized potatoes already baked, one cup of shredded cheese, quarter cup of Parmesan cheese grated, a half a cup of sour cream, three tablespoons of butter, half a cup of minced onion, and salt and pepper to taste. Preheat oven to 400 degrees. Split potatoes in half and scrape the insides into mixing bowl. Set the skins aside for later. Add all other ingredients to potato insides and mix well. Place mixture back into skins and bake until tops are golden brown. And then we have a broccoli and rice casserole. For the broccoli and rice casserole, you're going to need one cup of rice, one can of cream of mushroom soup, one box of frozen chopped broccoli, and shredded cheddar cheese. Cook rice as directed on package. Thaw broccoli. Mix rice, soup, and broccoli. Pour into dish and top with cheese. Cook until cheese is melted at 350 degrees. Or you can just do a broccoli casserole. For just the plain broccoli casserole, you need one can of cream of chicken soup, one can of cream of celery soup, one small onion, one cup of white instant rice, one cup of water, one cup of broccoli, one 8 ounce jar of cheese whiz, and one stick of butter. It has rice in it too. But you just mix it all together and bake it at 350 degrees for one hour. And up here we have Benita's squash casserole. For Benita's squash casserole, you're going to need two to five squash cut up, two to three zucchinis cut up, one large carton of sour cream, one large can of cream of chicken soup, three cups of shredded cheddar cheese, one bag of herb Pepperidge Farm stuffing mix, which is the best kind, in my opinion, Pepperidge Farm, one large onion chopped, and two eggs. Now you're going to cook the squash, zucchini, and onion in a in water in a pot. Drain and pour into a large bowl. Add the eggs, sour 
cream, soup, two to two and a half cups of the cheese, and enough of the stuffing mix to keep from being so runny. Stir to mix very well. You may need to add more stuffing mix. Put into casserole dish and add cheese and stuffing mix to the top. Bake on 350 degrees for at least 45 minutes or browning and bubbly. And over here we have garden pasta, a fit or fat recipe. <laughs> for this recipe you're going to need five medium tomatoes, two stalks of celery, two medium carrots, one medium onion, six to eight green onions, a packet of equal, a teaspoon of basil, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of oregano, one tablespoon of vegetable oil, and one pound of spaghetti noodles, your choice of style. Chop first five ingredients. Put vegetables in pot, cover tightly, and cook 10 minutes over medium heat. Stir occasionally. Add seasonings. Cover and cook 5 minutes on medium-low. Add oil. Simmer 30 minutes until carrots are done. Cook spaghetti, drain, and toss all together and serve hot. Hmm. And then we have lasting slaw. For lasting slaw, you're going to need one quart of chopped cabbage, one teaspoon of salt, three quarters of a cup of grated carrot, three quarters of a cup of chopped green peppers, half a cup of chopped onions, half a cup of sugar, three quarters of a cup of vinegar, half a teaspoon of celery seed, and a half a teaspoon of mustard seed. Mix cabbage and salt and let stand one hour. Mix other ingredients and pour over cabbage. Keep refrigerated. Here we have a recipe for hot pepper relish. For the hot pepper relish, you're going to need one dozen green peppers, one dozen red peppers, six large white onions, nine hot peppers, one pint of vinegar, two cups of sugar, and three tablespoons of salt. Wash peppers and remove seeds and white portions. Peel onions. Chop peppers and onions. Combine with vinegar, sugar, and salt. Add pepper mixture. Bring to a bowl and boil for five minutes. Pour immediately into hot sterilized jars. Seal at once. Makes five pints. And then down here we have a bread stuffing recipe. Looks pretty easy. For the bread stuffing, you're going to need four cups of dried bread cr crumbs, three tablespoons of chopped onion, one teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, a quarter teaspoon of poultry seasoning, three quarters of a cup of melted butter, a quarter cup of chopped celery, one egg beaten, sage to taste, and hot water or stock to moisten. And you mix it all together and bake until done. And finally up here we have a recipe for corn pudding. For corn pudding you're going to need these items. You need two cans of cream style corn, one 11 ounce can of whole kernel corn, drained, four eggs, well beaten, a third of a cup of sugar, three tablespoons of corn starch, one tablespoon of minced onions, one and a half teaspoons of seasoned salt, half a teaspoon of ground mustard, half a cup of milk, and a quarter cup of butter or margarine melted. Preheat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Combine cream style corn, whole kernel corn, and eggs in large bowl. Add mixture of sugar, corn starch, minced onion, seasoned salt, and ground mustard. 
Stir in milk and melted butter. Pour mixture into a greased three-quart casserole dish and bake one hour, stirring once. And that's all the recipes that we have for today. I really hope that you enjoyed going over these. I certainly did. And I hope that you have a great day. I'll see you again soon.